A ping pong ball of mass m hits a firmly held ping pong paddle with a speed v. The ball rebounds at the same angle theta with the same original speed v. Find the impulse on the paddle by the ball. Again, the impulse is uh, the average force times time, and uh, it would equal to the change in momentum if the force we're looking at is the net force on the object. Even though we're looking for the impulse on the paddle by the ball, we'll have to look at the ball instead, because uh, the force by the ball on the paddle is not the net force on the paddle, but the force on the ball by the paddle is the net force on the ball. So we're going to use the ball to find the impulse first. And this is a two-dimensional case. That means that we have to look at it one direction at a time. In this case, it is convenient for us to use a coordinate system like this. One direction is parallel to the paddle surface. The other one is perpendicular to the paddle surface. So for these slanted velocities, we'll have to find the components for those. So we have to make a rectangle like this, parallel to the paddle surface and the perpendicular to the paddle surface. The velocity goes that way, so the two components will be this one and uh, that one. If you have trouble drawing the rectangle, what you can do is you can turn your paper so that it's upright like this. And then you can draw your rectangle. And that will be one component, that's the other component. And this will be the complete rectangle, like that. Okay, now let's see. The x component, because uh, this angle is theta, this is a z shape. If that angle is theta, this angle must also be theta. Or if you draw it carefully, then the slim angle would be the theta, just like that one. And this component in the x direction is adjacent to the angle, therefore it is uh, the cosine component. That means the other one must be the sine component. And that one is symmetric. That means uh, if this is theta, that one is theta, and this adjacent side is V cosine theta, and that one is V sine theta. At least symmetric. Now, if you look carefully in the x direction and the y direction, uh, in which direction do we have the change in momentum? we have changing momentum only in the x direction, not the y direction, because in the y direction, the initial and the final velocities are both v sine theta, same direction. In the x direction, the initial velocity is v cosine theta, the final velocity is also v cosine theta, but the opposite direction. So the velocity in the x direction has changed, although the velocity in that y direction did not change. So to find the impulse on the ball, we only need to find the impulse on the ball in the x direction, the x component. So this is the changing momentum in the x direction. That would be the m times the changing velocity, which is the final velocity's x component minus the initial velocity's x component. So that's m times the final velocity's x component is v cosine theta. The initial velocity's x component is also v cosine theta. Are correct? No, 
because these two velocities are in opposite directions. So if I make this one positive, I have to make that one negative. Or I can make that one positive and this one is negative. We just have to make our choice and then stay with our choice. I'm going to use the positive for final velocity. That means the initial velocity is negative. Therefore, this gives us uh, twice the mv cosine theta. And that will be the impulse on the ball. And because this is positive and I use final velocity as positive, that means that this goes uh, that way. But we're not looking for the impulse on the ball. We're looking for the impulse on the paddle. That means uh, the impulse on the paddle should be equal amount but opposite direction. So it has to be negative 2 mv cosine theta and the uh, opposite direction. And it makes sense uh, for the impulse on the paddle to go that way because the ball hits the paddle in that kind of direction.